So today, I wanna go over something that everybody has a different term for it, but it's known as the snowball effect or the cascade effect. But it goes something like this. All of a sudden, the key stops working so great. It doesn't wanna actually turn the car on or it'll turn everything on except the computer, etc. There's multiple switches in here that get turned on when the key rotates forward. When this fails, you can buy another one that imminently will also fail because it's still the same poor design and on off, on off, on off, break shit. So then you decide, well, I wanna install a push start and then I won't have to deal with this shit anymore. Well then now, I've got the switches installed, but I need to drill some holes so they're not just fucking whacking my legs. So, I could drill some holes here, pull this off, drill some holes, there's probably gonna be a panel of metal behind there, it's gonna be a bitch. And they may not reach that far. So I may have to add wire. So if I wanna do that, then my thought is, why not go over here to a switch panel replace the stock stereo because it's coming out anyway. I mean, who the fuck listens to tapes? And it's just a piss poor quality radio anyway. So the idea would be to replace this with an entire panel of switches for lights and winch and etc. So I think that's what I'm gonna do today. And I think it starts with... Come on, you cunts. Okay. And it looks like from there, there's a couple of 10 millimeters, there'll probably be some plugs, an antenna wire, and even a ground in the back. I'm sick of fucking turning wrenches. Nice. Okay. Yep, there's the ground couple of plugs and the antenna wire which we also will not need now making a switch panel for this that will fit completely flush with everything else once the covers put back in can be very tricky unless we go ahead and pull the faceplate off of this guy and Cut out the guts, leave an edge to rivet a piece of sheet metal to, and then bolt it right back in with the supplied bolts. So that's what we're gonna do. So to surmise, cascade effect was, the key went bad, instead of buying another key lock cylinder for 30 bucks and it being a problem later, you grab a couple of switches for five, 10 bucks total, wire them up via the wiring diagram online, and also when you pull the key, it goes forward and the whole cylinder comes out with a push button underneath here. So it leaves the steering wheel unlocked. Then we're going to extend these wires, run them back through here. Get this guy out of the way. We do not need it anymore. We will use the power and the speaker wires later to run our iPad mini or whatever we're gonna use for navigation and radio. So, the plan now is to get this faceplate off of here. There's a few screws, there's some tabs. Once it's off, I can cut out the middle, use some rivets to plate over it, and then uh, bolt it right back in. All right, so I'm gonna pull these tabs and these screws, and this thing should pop right out. So now that we've removed the piece off the front, you can see there's like a nice edge we can follow. We'll cut that out with a cutting wheel and that'll leave just the frame. And then we'll rivet a piece of sheet metal over the top, covering it all up. All right, with all that out of the way, we can Trace this onto a piece of sheet metal, cut out the sheet metal, make it all smooth, paint it, drill some holes, probably uh, three on the bottom, three on the top, and then rivet it to this, and this can bolt right back into the Jeep. 
Found this piece of aluminum left over from my custom gauge panel in the Bel Air. So I'm gonna map that off with a little bit of a marker. We'll cut it out, polish it up, put it right back on. All right, now I can drill some holes and then I can start punching holes for the actual switches themselves. Probably have multiples over here. Run, radio, start over here. So. All right, so that's all done. Now I can start punching holes for the switches. So I'm gonna kind of map out an idea of how I want that to look first, and then I'll start popping holes. Then I'm gonna put my run and stop switch with a rocker so you can kill them in case of an emergency, and then a radio switch, and then push to start switch. And then I'll have room for other switches over here. I'll have room over here for other switches for accessory lights and winch. Now we're back at the Jeep. I wanna get these switches out of here so I know exactly what size holes I need to make and I don't waste any time or material having to do this twice. Now with the switches removed, I now know exactly what size hole to make. A little big, but it'll work. All right, panel is switched. Now I need to get those wires over to there. Mount this back up and see what we got. And with this panel out of the way, it was just some Phillips or probably, I don't know, eight millimeter, six millimeter, quarter inch, I don't know. Pull that metal panel out of there. And now I can get to these wires. I'll strip off what I don't need and then pull them over there, hopefully with enough slack to get them to that switch panel. All right, now I have backed the wires out of the harness and all the way over to this control box. And then I can just flip them right up through to here. I'm gonna put them back on the switches and put the panel back in. Now with the wiring complete, I can go ahead and button this guy up nice and tight and put the face plate back on and test everything out. All right, so there you go. I have room for a radio switch eventually that will control my iPad, mini, whatever I decide to do. I can put other switches over here for my lights and my winch if I wanna power it from inside the cab, which I'll probably end up doing in another video. Comment if you have any questions, like the video if you liked, subscribe if you wanna see more, and as always, keep on modding.